Hello everyone. We are filming an ROA off-road video today. Morning, Josh. Uh, well, we are here to talk about the Taxa Mantis Overland and some of the differences that exist between this unit and the standard model. So we've got a lot of really cool uh, things we're going to talk about today as we talk about the differences and show what the Mantis is capable of, especially the Overland model. So some of the differences, right, right at the beginning, is uh, we've got an articulating hitch that is something that is very different from the standard model. What's really awesome about this is it can rotate in just about 360 degrees. Yeah. So when you get articulating, the thing is that happens if you get off road at all and you have your truck is flat per se and the trailer gets up on a hill or something with a ball, you have potential of popping off or twisting frames where this is gonna be safer on your frame as well as giving, keeping all your tires on the ground, which you always want all your tires on the ground. We've used uh, the Black Series poly block hitch and one of the nice things about the lock and roll is that it's very easy to hook up to. So that is one thing when you're using articulating hitches, sometimes they can be difficult to hook up to. The lock and roll hitch is very easy to connect, so it's very user friendly. Some of the other things, uh, the stabilizers on the Overland model are actually a heavier duty stabilizer uh, versus the stabilizers that come with the standard model. So that is another difference on the Overland. Hey Josh, is this any taller? It is. It looks taller. So the standard model, it has an 11 inches of clearance. The Overland model has 14 inches of clearance. So we have three more inches of clearance on the Overland model. Also, you can see here, this is actually the titanium color, which is unique to the Overland model. You cannot get the titanium color on the uh, standard model. You have to get the Overland model. So is there any difference in the suspension? Is it the same or? So the suspension on the Overland is actually a Timbrin axle-less suspension. You can only get the Timbrin axle-less independent suspension on the Overland models. The standard model has a uh, torsion axle and again the Overland model is axle-less. So you're going to have more like flexibility off-road and you're going to be able to go places that you know with the Overland model that you can't go with the standard model. And then with that extra three inches of lift, it gives us a greater departure angle and approach angle and break over. Just all around, you're gonna be able to get over more things. Yep, so we're gonna have better angles because of the um, higher clearance on the Overland. Also, one of the other differences is that it does have the Cooper Discoveries. The tires are actually an improved off-road tire over the standard model. Also, the tires and the rims are actually bigger as well. Um, on the standard model, it's a 15-inch rim. On the Overland, it's a 16-inch rim. So the tires themselves are actually a little bit bigger as well. What do we got to do to get ready to go off-road? That's a good question. I am new to the off-road <laughs> world, so you know, Michael was saying this morning that we should air down, and my question is why? Why should we be airing down when we're going off-road? That's a great question. When you go off-roading, you got rocks and holes and all sorts of things, and when you hit a rock, it actually hit, creates a lot of um, pressure and, and impact. And so when you air down, one of the things it does is it decreases the impact on your suspension and it actually, and your drivetrain and everything. So it actually helps your truck not take as much damage from off-roading. It also damages the trail less because when you have tires that are fully aired up, it digs into the trails. So you're actually being nicer to the trails and creating less washes and problems with the trails. So one, it, it, it decreases damage. Two, 
when you air down your tires, it increases your stretch um, both ways. So you have a bigger pad on the ground, which will give you more traction overall. And it gives you more traction long-wise and width-wise. More grip. Yeah, more grip. So more rubber on the, the ground. More yeah. rubber on the ground. And then the other thing is it gives you a softer ride. It's just nicer when you're going driving down the road. It it sucks up all the little rocks and, and bumps and things. So it's just smoother and which will also make it smoother in your, your vehicle. Also, the trailer will be smoother. And then one thing just to keep in mind is that you know what kind of tires you have because your tires are all rated differently. So you got to take there's some math you could do, you know, typically just general rule of thumb is you check what your max PSI is with your max load rating. So for example, if it's 3000 at 50 PSI, then you have two tires, then you add that up. So you have 6,000 total available. And this trailer, for example, at fully loaded, it could be at 4,500. So that means I could air down my tires, you know, about 20 PSI and be okay with my load rating. But some people just go, oh, I just load, go down to 15 PSI, it's fine. But then you're under your load rating and that has potential for blowout on tires, which we may have learned from experience. <laughs> so it's, 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 it's important to understand your vehicle because every vehicle is different, every trailer is different, every tire is different. So make sure you do your research, not just so where would they where would they find that on the tire? Where are we gonna find that? All right, so if you look at your tires, you'll find somewhere it has your max cold PSI. So the max cold PSI on these tires is 80, and then the load rating is 2680. So what the easiest way to do it is if you take your calculator, I'll even just show you right here. So this is rated at 80 PSI for 2,680 pounds, and there's two tires, so 2,680 pounds times two so there's my max which like i said the mantis overland its max capacity that is recommended is 4500 and dry is 3000 so if i have that there at five three and i know that it's 80 psi i can actually divide this by 80 psi and that means i had 67 pounds per psi so now if I go, oh, well, I've loaded my stuff up and I know I weigh 4,000 pounds, then I'd go 4,000 pounds divided by 67. That means I don't want to go any lower than basically 60 PSI on my trailer. And so that makes it really quick and easy to be able to calculate and know where I want to air my tires down and not that I'm going to under air them. So super easy math. There you have it. I'm going to go ahead and air these down to 60 PSI. I suppose uh, that's another benefit, right, to airing down is that um, if your tires are all the way pumped up, they're going to be more likely to pop, they are. you know, hitting those rocks. So airing down is going to make it easier when we're hitting some of those uh, rocks and stuff. Too. So we're going to air down now this, you know, 20 PSI down. So we'll just go down to 60 and then we'll air down our truck. So we'll have a much nicer ride and we'll go hit the trail and show off this awesome independent suspension. Awesome, let's do it. Okay, so we're getting ready to air down. Shane, if we're going to air down tires, what are we gonna do? Uh, well, just stick your key in the, you know, unscrew the cap and stick your finger on it or your key and... Uh, I don't think that works. Okay. So come over here. Uh, yeah, definitely try to have tools when you're on the ro off roading. And I actually have a couple different tools here. There's lots of different air down tools. You could use this one or you can use these ones. These are really cool. Or these ones I actually really like. This is a, I'm not sponsoring anybody, but these are the ones that I have set for my truck. So you can get different different types of air down, air down tools. Like I said, those are this is a super common one. Um, these are actually really cool because you can actually preset what you want your PSI to be at. What is it? Does and, it stop when it reaches? And it, yeah, so I just screw this guy in right here. And once it, once it reaches the, the preset PSI, 
it's gonna it's just gonna automatically stop so I can screw that on, on all four of my tires and once the air stops well I go start I just start off-roading so it's pretty easy I I have these ones also because I have these preset to my trailer so I use these on my trailer and I use these ones on my truck and I hit the trails really fast okay so one thing to keep in mind, and Michael was talking about the calculations on your airing down your tires on the truck. I'm not gonna air down on my back tires like I normally would if I was just off-roading with my truck because I'm towing a trailer. So there's a lot more weight on the back of my truck. So I'm gonna keep my PSI uh, probably about 10 PSI higher than what I normally would do, you know, if I didn't have a trailer because I've calculated what I like to ride out on trails without a trailer. With a trailer I add, you know, 10, 15, 20 PSI, just because I don't want to put that much weight on it for the reason that Michael was explaining earlier. Simple as that. <laughs>